Good evening. Hello and uh, welcome back, everybody. It's 2021. Oh, and we're in lockdown again. But regardless, this is going to be an hour for you to enjoy, to wistfully drift away to another part of the world with the company of the fantastic Charlie Waite. And Charlie, good evening. Good evening to you and good evening to everybody. It's uh, very good to have you back with us and uh, for everyone who's joining in online good evening do let us know where you are in the comments good to see a couple of you coming in and joining us now we are back after a little hiatus uh, in the uh, Christmas period but we have events scheduled for the following uh, four to five weeks at least and then we will see how we're going and we may well keep going depending on what's out there and what's happening in the world. But for everyone joining in, welcome along. Now, uh, if you haven't seen one of these, uh, where have you been? Uh, but more importantly, uh, we're gonna walk you through a good number of images from uh, India and a tour and an area that Charlie knows well, that's very important to him. And there's, as, uh, there's lots of interesting things to talk about photography wise, uh, to do with the images themselves, to do with seeing images, and also to do with different styles of shooting that, that you may or may not have seen from Charlie before as well. So there's loads of great things for us to get into. Now, just before we kick off, uh, as ever, if you have any questions or comments, uh, do share them either through the Facebook comments or YouTube comments if you're watching there. We're streaming live on both, and I shall moderate those and try and grab them and throw them at Charlie. If you have any questions at all, do let us know. Right. Uh, without any further ado, Charlie, let us get into this and let's just share our screen there. So the obvious first question is, is why Kerala in India? Uh, well, it's the little pointed bit down one side. And um, I think what what intrigued me about it was that essentially it's it's a wonderful, wonderful mixture of an incredible amount of human activity, all all striving away to look after themselves and to feed themselves and to clothe themselves. But not for one moment do they appear to be in any way, you know, fed up with life. They're incredibly gracious. And I've heard from a number of people who've told me that really, Charlie, you've got to go to Kerala. And um, I don't know whether I'm pronouncing it right, but Kerala or Kerala, both work, I think. And um, and it's it's not, oddly enough, it's not so far away as we know. But one of the things that mattered hugely to me, I think, was the fact that I was going to be dropped in to a completely new world. Now, we all travel and we all are dropped into completely new worlds. But this is about the most extraordinarily new world that I've ever been dropped into in my life before. I, I just simply never had. Nothing was in any way recognizable. Yes, there was, um, was electricity. But in terms of the people, they were just completely, they were almost loving. And they were, they honored us for visiting. And that's an extraordinary quality in the Carolyn people, really special. Yeah, and I think it's um, interesting as we walk through these images, we're going to see, uh, like I mentioned at the top, quite a few different styles. And and more importantly, we're going to see a uh, glimpse into that different culture. And for a lot of photographers, that's such an exciting thing. But it can be difficult. And we might touch on that, Charlie, with lots of things happening around you. It's very, uh, it's the polar opposite, isn't it, to, to the bide your time, very careful, very, very considered sort of landscape work, which some of us may do but let's get into that so just from a location point of view charlie and i know the tour uh, runs in september and this is actually yeah. a tour that's scheduled to run the 13th to the 24th of september this year everybody fingers crossed obviously yeah. we're all moving in the right direction with that um but for just from a climatic sort of point of view is it is it extremely warm and sweaty at that point is it uh, no. how's the temp no. it's it, it's a very very good question actually it's surprisingly manageable because you're pretty much on the coast, you always have a very, very light breeze coming off the water. And that, that's really dependable because you don't want to go to a spot where you're baking and you you know you can hardly breathe. And one tends to think, oh, India, it's going to be really hot and I'll, I'll suffocate with no air. It's absolutely not like that. It really isn't. The night times are warm, but it, it's never really, really deeply humid. And, uh, and we'll go pretty much the top to the bottom of it. We, we arrive in a place called Cochin, 
and um, and the rest is just wandering around through this absolutely remarkable place. And I think we're there ten nights, I believe. Fab. Well, let's begin our wandering this evening, uh, if we can, photographically. And um, this this I'm going to let you do most of the talking here, Charlie. We've got a good number of images to get through, but we really both of us wanted to share with you kind of the the energy, I suppose, and the excitement of being in somewhere quite different like this. But I, I just, if I can make a little point on this particular one, is it's very un-Charlie Waits, but it's very Charlie Waite all at the same time, um, to do with recognition, uh, to do with balance, to do with energy, to do with humour, to do with space, to do with lots of different things. But rather than me giving my... Uh, amateurish version of that Charlie I want you to pick up on some of the things uh because we have another image following this which is a little bit different for different reasons but the 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 interconnectivity of the elements and the colors in here is what really appeals to me but I'd, I'd love for you to just tell the story well my word you've identified so many good things about it which I'm very grateful for but you're also incredibly articulate Sam you've done it all for me but that well the thing firstly that mattered a lot to me is that the you either you orchestrate or you choreograph an image in the way that brilliant wedding photographers do. I always have immense admiration for them, the way they can bring everybody together who are in some, time, some cases more worse for wear. But in this case, this man did not know it was happening. He did not know that I was photographing. And so as a result, he was completely relaxed and absorbed and he didn't put on anything. He didn't strike a pose. But what I think you're quite right when you talk about recognition, the, the, my great Ansel Adams phrase, sorry, I just have to res, uh, repeat it, and uh, recognition and pre-visualization blended together in one single moment of awareness. And I think that's surely what happens with photography, isn't it? That we turn, we look, we, accept, we attend, and then suddenly we, we pre-visualize and we, we feel the impulse and we settle down and we make our production. And I, I think that's really what a photograph is. It's a, it's, a, it's a production. It's not just a photograph. We know that well enough. So what appealed to me here was the global view, which I then suddenly unraveled very quickly and found that it wasn't just the blue umbrella that was slightly comic, but also there was blue to be found elsewhere, not just the, the, the sort of cyan blue between the ladder, which I felt played a really important role. Thank gosh, he didn't move to one side. He was in the appropriate gap. It wasn't just that blue, but there was a blue even the blue on his shoes were this, was the same blue. There was a blue in the newspaper. There was a blue just at the bottom of the newspaper next to the sack. And then, of course, there were more blues elsewhere. So it wasn't just a lone sort of um, statement, a blue statement all on its own. It was picked up elsewhere, albeit in very small ways. And I'm fascinated by the, the global view that, that we, we feel we've seen globally. But I think our antennae and our sensors actually pick up all sorts of details which then contribute to us saying yes i'm going to make a photograph here but i so in other words i think we see much more than we fully we are fully conscious of seeing yes and do you think do you think that develops with your own visual experience even though you may be, it may be happening subconsciously at the time do you think that's built on being aware of things within your images looking back at things within you know just building that visual vocabulary so to speak I do. Nicely put. Really nicely put, Sam. Yes, I, I certainly do. I really do. Uh, and it, another little phrase some people might be bored with, which is attend and intend and let everything attended to be either intended or accepted to be there. And I, and I think it's a refinement. And, and that's often personally what I, what I think many of us do. You know, and that we have some terrific photographers, photojournalists, landscape and, and uh, you know, rep reportage, and really, it's just wonderful when we when we meet them all and we see all their work on the various different social networking sites. And I and I think a lot of us, I'd like to think, would would agree with you and I that we do we do we don't just point <laughs> and not realise what we're pointing at. We need to identify, and we do, what it is we're going to make a photograph of. And then, of course, we make the big decision, what I call the final signal: <laughs> Will we do it? And we, we more often than not do. And if we walk away, it means we've been discerning and we've rejected what we feel did not work. I sure felt this one though works, Sam, I must say. Yeah, no, absolutely. And there's all sorts of uh, 
crazy things happening with regard to shape, which we're not going to. I'm not going to get into now. But there's lots of lovely interlockings. This line of his of the sack and his forearm and the, the angle up of his upper arm there. But we, I could decode this all night long. But we've got a lot of images. Um, but I, just before we move on, Charlie, this this ladder, um, and I suppose lots of times in there's lots of visual signals we use. Some can it can be a road leading away. It can often be. I know your stairs crazy. Um, I think that's fair to say. Um, yeah. And the ladder here maybe fills that role for us as, as a way in and out, metaphorically, yeah. of the image. I think it does. I, by the way, I did want to tell you I am in staircase therapy at the moment. Okay. <laughs> yes, I, I, may, I may be entitled to a refund. I'm not sure that it's working. Clearly not here. But uh, okay. you're right. This ladder played a really crucial part, and it was a chunky one. And, um, and the texture of the wall was absolutely superb. I, I, it's just the blue on his sandals was so good and his, and his toes sticking out and his crossed ankles. It, it just was an extraordinary, wonderful moment. I, I really, I, I departed feeling hugely content. Yeah, good, good. Okay, well, we, we're not going to do as much time on every image, but I, we really want to spend a bit of time on that because, as I say, it's very un-Charlie, but it's absolutely Charlie all in one go. Um, and we wanted to just... Um, present a slightly uh, different feel here. Obviously, the, the tonal palette is very different. The, the colors, there's still lots of lovely texture and a, a really sort of distinguished look here. But the, the other difference, Charlie, is that this lady was fully aware she was sitting for the photograph. And I think maybe can we just talk a little bit about that and how that affects the relationship when you're when you're shooting with people? Yes, nicely, nicely posed question. Um, and I'll be brief. Um, well, firstly, she was um, hugely honoured and touched that I wanted to do a photograph of her. She found it very, very complimentary that I wanted to do so. And she wanted to sit in exactly the right place. And I wanted her hair to be quite close to that upright pillar because there's the tonal values within the pillar that almost match her hair. So we, we see it globally. And there was another upright over to her door um, on the right. And I, so I thought all the, the, the values, the color values, that, as you say, the palette was, was absolutely spot on, really. And um, she was poor, and yet she was so graceful and so beautiful and poised. And um, there's a little village called Ator, I believe. And, and I just, I could have hugged her, but that would not have been appropriate. But her, 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 her delivery, uh, her cooperation was, was of immense value to me. And it, it, she didn't find the process invasive which of course a lot of us do. We all say, don't we? Oh, I don't take a good photograph. Oh, I don't like being photographed. And so we, we run away and we leave a cardboard cutout of ourselves and we retreat completely. She didn't. She just felt, I'm graceful. I know I'm looking pretty good. And, um, and I would be delighted if you photographed me. And um, the whites of her eyes, just everything about it was, was absolutely terrific. There we are. Yeah, well, I, there's nothing more for me to add. Perfectly, <laughs> perfectly done. But a really beautiful, um, really beautiful image. And those textures is something we're going to get onto later on. And color palette. And, and we've talked a little bit about this on um, on the various live streams that we've done. That that it, places do have sort of certain color palettes. If if that's a strange thing to say, but it's true. I think. And uh, you're going to see everybody as we walk through these images, the reds, greens, yellows. And I think color, um, before we get into shape and, and compositions here, Charlie, but color is such a big uh, visual stimulus in that part of the world. Is that correct? Oh, it most certainly is. It really, really is. I mean, there's that thing red and green should not be seen without a color in between. There's an enormous amount of red and green. And the, what's so important is you might notice that the lady on her left and on, on the right, although you can't see her hair, they're incredibly well groomed. And they're probably earning just a few pence each day. And they knew I was photographing and they, they simply didn't mind. So uh, another example of, of cooperation and, and pride and pride that we'd, pride that we'd come to, to India, that I was there and, and they, they enjoyed the process of being photographed. There wasn't any kind of resistance, their endless smiles. And you're quite right, the color was 
are just overwhelmingly good. I mean, talk about exotic. And you'll you know see the saris and the bracelets and the hairdos, and they're so graceful. They have immense po poise, and they walk absolutely beautifully. And there's no rushing, there's no running, and no black is ever worn. Hardly any dark colors are ever worn. It's always red, carmine red almost. So I was really delighted with that. And that was very unfamiliar to me. You know, so a soft, uh, low-key, low you don't get that much in, uh, in Kerala. No. And as we, as we just have a, we've got a few images from this, uh, this kind of location, I would, I would imagine it is, or obviously you may have various visits there, but mm. it's quite amazing to see people working so diligently with their hands as well. And, and the foods, the spices, the, and I know we're going to touch a bit on tea later as well. You know, it's great to see that connectivity to the food as well, which I would imagine is pretty special there. It really is. It's a absolutely bang on, Sam. They, it really is. Their, their whole life really is connected with producing food and they've got enough of it. Um, and they're, they're incredibly literate as well. They speak really quite, quite good English in some cases. And they've all have received very, very good education. In fact, Kerala, I think, is thought to be the most literate um, state in the whole, uh, whole country. Um, and they know they're special and they all of them experience water every day we're going to talk a little bit about that and I think that has a bearing on their general outlook um, but yes this is the spice village and um, I, I want to say cardamom but I'm sure some um, excellent cooks in our audience <laughs> would probably know what this is but they're sorting it and they're, they're, they're grading it that's the word and it's really quite noisy uh, actually and they are chatting away with one another an enormous amount um, so it, it may not be the greatest image, but I do rather like the way it just disappears up at the far end. That that would probably be, there are probably twice as many people as I'm seeing there. And all all women, uh, they do it extremely well. And they're, they're delightful, absolutely delightful. And as you can see, terribly well dressed. Uh, you wouldn't think that they didn't have much money, but they're, they're so graceful. And I'll keep using that word. I've never met such graceful people ever in all my travels. And I think photographically, when you when you find uh, repetitive patterns or shapes or activities or actions, that's always something we enjoy playing with. I, I don't know why. It's, it's that symmetry that we like, I suppose. So the, if we speak photographically again for a moment here, uh, the idea is always to find that balance and, and, and harmony, isn't it, between, between shapes and between the, the flow through the frame. It really is. No, it absolutely is. And, uh, and, it, and you get offered a lot of that, I must say, in Kerala. You really do. And you're right. There's a kind of impulse to want to have a sense of design sometimes. Uh, and as you say, repetition. And that I was certainly provided with that here. I really was. And these splashes of red and, and you know, burgundy and all over the place. I, I, it was really an extraordinary experience. I didn't really want to leave the Spice Village. And we spend a good time there. We really do. And here's a, a lady with, a, I mean, the color palette is just outrageously good. And it's so, it's so, so gentle. And uh, that green stripe on the sack is just exactly what, <laughs> what one wanted to be there. And we, no, we couldn't see her face. I don't think that really mattered. But, uh, you know, she look how, how much she cared about her clothing and what mattered to her to wear the right matching clothing. Absolutely lovely. And you might say, well, well why shouldn't she? Um, and of course, that would be <laughs> a good a good answer. But she just was lovely and went on to thank me after I left to thank me for photographing her. It's quite marvellous. She must have known the great Charlie Waite was in the in the vicinity. Um, <laughs> well, I think it like I say, we wanted to sort of paint the picture and I, I'm being struck a lot with the, the colour, the green, especially in the, uh, these wicker, they, uh, wicker, they appear to be sort of wicker baskets they're working in. They've got yes, such yeah. a beautiful shape. Um, it's, you know, that, and that's been there throughout all, all of time, hasn't it, with amphoras and all sorts of things. So I think often we recognise shapes like that and we, we react to them in the, in the due way, so to speak. Um, but if I if I just move us on a little here, we're, we're into a different region, and obviously, um, again, this this has chords of what we're used to seeing, perhaps in more of your landscape work with regards um, the the synergy and and the composition and the, the lovely diagonal lines that the and the trees standing as they do so very clearly. So just explain a little bit bit to us here about where we are 
uh, and th that type of environment maybe and, and finding imagery within it well we're slightly up into the foothills foothills of kerala um below some of the higher mountains which are not actually in the state so much um where the tea is is uh, growing and um i have done some images of tea plant uh, the, some of the girls in again in vivid vivid uh, saris um picking the tea we might just see a close-up of one of them with some on her head i think um and there are a lot of the trees coming out of the tea plantation which are huge so they're 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 almost quite sort of surreal in it that's probably not the right word but there's a feeling of that they planted those trees in exactly the right place and uh they they're certainly not into cutting things down but they they plant a lot of tea and it there is worth what it's worthwhile um saying a little story i went to the um, tea sorting area afterwards and um and i said um i was offered a cup of tea by the owner of the plantation and uh and he gave it to me without um without milk which i i, I didn't i had in those days and uh and he said uh, in perfect english i'm not giving you milk in your tea because you british assassinate your tea <laughs> by putting milk in it <laughs> so he said you can't get the flavor of it and so those people who who i know who do not wish to have milk in their tea i really do understand because the, the, there are many distinct flavors in tea which i fully personally hadn't um, fully appreciated but the tea plantations i don't usually like the word photogenic but oh my word if you're going to use that word they really are they're absolutely extraordinary and the colors of the, the tree trunks are, are wonderful the way they contrast so well with the sheer organization and the design and yes the patterns um i i, I really i think we have nearly nearly a day in the tea plantations mm. And I think separation is something you always talk about and attentiveness to, to to how elements interact with each other. And just purely from a photographic point of view, obviously, you know, I'm looking at all these spaces ne neatly between all of these trees, which I know you will have finessed at the time. But that's what makes the difference. And it's being finessing of that and being conscious of it while you're there yes. um, allows us to breathe within the image. If the, If two things were touching, we would even subconsciously, we'd be disturbed by that and, and thrown out of the out of the scene yeah. so yes you you made a terribly good point and, and very very briefly because i know we need to get on yeah, i did an exercise a while ago where um i showed um a sort of a guinea pig friend um two photographs one which had been refined like this one and one where one tree had masked another very slight, slightly and and i said look hand on heart these two images are absolutely precisely absolutely identical and then a little pause but but which one do you prefer and uh, it was kind of diabolical uh, question, of course, but and if the answer was just as you've just said that the answer was the one that had been more refined, and it was a very very subtle, hardly hardly almost impossible to detect the fact that one bit of tree was nicking another bit. But we all get very concerned about getting our images just right, and and so would a cook, and so would a gardener, and so would a designer. We're all engaged in a a very very rewarding and and fairly private creative endeavour. And we come away from it always enriched, even if we haven't managed to make the image, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if I just take a very brief pause, uh, I'll just remind everybody, we are here uh, for the next few weeks, every Tuesday at 8 p.m. You can join us on Facebook Live. You can join us on YouTube Live in full 1080 HD via the Light and Land YouTube channel. So do check back in because we've got various virtual tours, creative editing, all sorts of sessions lined up for you in the next few weeks. And if you ever want to know more about what's coming, make sure you signed up to the Light and Land newsletter as well. And if we just keep our tea uh, going, so to speak, this, uh, this is a lovely, another great colorful image. And I think you mentioned it just before. So just illuminate us here about the, the, the joy on that face more than anything. Yeah. And clearly the dentistry in Kerala is second to none. <laughs> um, but she, she, no, she was, the, in, once again, she knew that she was being photographed. And uh, and she did look at me, and I saw, I did a couple with her looking at me. Um, so I, I, what, and again, I just keep repeating myself. There was absolutely no sense of intrusion. She, she, she almost found it a wonderful, a fun experience. And I think it's important for when we do photograph people, when we come across 
people like the, the, the love, wonderful people in Kerala um, to, to show them the image we've done. But in this case, it was film. Uh, in many cases, I think it was film. May, may not have been, but so it's quite difficult sometimes to show them. But when I used to do Polaroids and sometimes show, give a Polaroid to show them and, and once or twice left them with a Polaroid. But it was a, um, really a, a lovely way of giving back to say, essentially, I've taken something from you and, and I want to show you what I've taken. And, uh, and they, there was no resistance. I will keep saying that it was, I came away from Carol on the few times I've been there thinking that they were hugely giving people and uh, that enriched me in, immensely. Excellent. Now, we talked about food, but I think there might also be a little backstory here with this chap, is that correct? Yes. Um, Yes, it, it was. I'm trying to remember what it is. Well, I, I do know I do know that he I should have bought some vegetables and that would have been a very good thing to have done. And so in a way, the exchange was incomplete because I failed to do that. And to this day, I regret that because he very sweetly prepared this breathtaking display. I mean, and not one of them tumbled down. You know, so quite what happens when somebody chooses a cabbage, he has to do it very, very carefully. But it does show you that the agriculture, the vegetable agriculture, they eat an enormous amount of vegetables um, and they're, they're in, in, you know, in, in very, very good shape. You don't tend to see people who are overweight. And I think they, they respect the food that they eat. Um, and they care deeply about the way that they manage their 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 food production. I think they're very environmentally sensitive. Um, and this was just one of many fabulous displays. I mean, absolutely fabulous. And uh, he was very, very good. He didn't look at me and he didn't mind me photographing. On no occasion has anybody minded that. Oh, look at this lovely moment. <laughs> they, Even they, elephant didn't mind. Yes, they adore their animals. And it did look a bit um, a bit cruel that that he was holding on to his ear, but in fact the elephant he knew well enough. He'd known it for a, from a very young age, and they cared hugely about their elephants. They they don't mistreat them mistreat them. They love them very much, and they know that they're they're crucial to their to their own livelihood. And um, and it's wonderful to see their their devotion to them. And this uh, bathing of the elephants takes place every single day. And um, it wasn't that they needed to be washed. They just, it was known by the owners that they would enjoy the process of being washed. And I, th I thought that was lovely. So uh, it was rather a jolly image. Not, not the sort of thing I would have come across every day, but I was very proud to pleased to be there. And, th and that's something we have time for on the tour, presumably seeing the elephants and also experiencing yeah. some of the local cultures. And I, this, um, there's all sorts going on here, actually. So I'm going to let you take this away, Charlie. Yes. Um, again, colour and culture is what it's all about. Yes, it really is. Um, dance is terribly important to them and ritual is important to them. Um, and what was so good about this particular occasion was that we were allowed to watch them make up. So the man to the left, as we look at the screen, um, uh, we saw him making up from the very start. It took him probably about half an hour, 45 minutes to make up. And then bit by bit, he started getting dressed. I think he might have a pair of Levi 501s underneath, but I'm not sure. But then they, they started going into a dancing routine. And there were about, uh, I think about six of them in total. But for no phenomenal performance and very, very exotic, all sorts of wonderful movements um, that I, I found really, really thrilling. And, and quite difficult to photograph, but in, in, fabulous to watch. And we, we didn't quite know what, what they were doing or what they were singing, but it was a, a true, true show, the like of which I've never seen before in my life. So I look forward to returning to them. Um, and, well, spectacle, isn't it? And actually this this um, just suddenly jumped out at me. This reminded me of one of your other images, maybe for a completely different reason, but to do with the darker uh, ring at the base of the tree. There is a there is an image we've talked about before on here, I believe, in France, perhaps, or Belgium, where you were waiting for the water. But this yeah. just strikes me here. But obviously, these two walking hand in hand through here. So this gives a sense, maybe, of that tropical feel in that part of the world. It really does, and and I'm really touched that you remember the 
the uh, trees in the in a lagoon that had where the water had lowered a little bit and it left a little damp belt That's right. your memory is absolutely astonishing sam but yes similar thing here probably but what was rather wonderful was that here we are again with these two uh, people probably going to work I think they were and they were almost skipping along because they were so content and I think that's the other thing that what what they what emanates from all of them from everybody living in this very very special area of India is that they're happy they're happy with their lot um, their days are full they're educated they brought their children off to, to school um, they have they have employment they have food and uh, they have a great bon ami between or between all of them, and they they get along extremely well. And they there's not as much you they don't drive very far. They do a lot of walking, um, and they they as I say they're so so graceful. And they knew I was doing a photograph, but they they just didn't mind. They didn't mind, and I thanked them afterwards, and they just gave me the broadest of grins. It was wonderful. It's amazing um, that. Uh, well, a couple of things. Firstly, Helen, uh, thank you for that uh, comment. Uh, how beautiful. This one reminds me of how open the women were with me and how quick to befriend and share a giggle when I went to India. And actually, um, the one thing I wanted to say, because this comes up quite a lot just before we move on to this next image, Charlie, is that we did talk, uh, forgive me, I can't remember, I think it was with Paul Sanders in one of these virtual tours, myself and Paul, we're talking about um, people giving permission for images and things like this. And actually, uh, what you mentioned there was about the a smile. You know, a lot of the times people just want to interact with other people, I would imagine. And you've had lots of experience doing this. So um, do you find that's the way that if, if there's that general bon ami and, and you're being receptive and interested in seeing them and learning about them, that they're receptive in front of the camera as well? Yes. That, that's a really, really good point. I mean, I, I mentioned to you before we came on air, as it were, that if, if we came out of our Tesco's, Waitrose, Sainsbury's or whatever it is, supermarket, um, how, with our shopping, how would we feel if there were a, a group of people from another part of the world all photographing us? I think we might well feel rather in, you know, that it was an invasion of our privacy and so on. The contrary is the case in Kerala absolutely the contrary so what is it do they have is that what is it that they have in their makeup and their their, their world worldly outlook that does not feel make them feel that we're invading them it, it is quite a, when i say it's a different country different scenery we're actually meeting the uh, a, 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 the type of people we're meeting are quite remarkable in their character and in their nature and and it, it really i think i will never be so affected by their gracefulness. There you are, I've used it probably 50 times already. And uh, and here's another tea plantation. Um, the clouds are not always compliant, are they, Sam? We all know as landscape photographers, you know, I've never spoken to clouds in the way that I have in recent years, but sadly, they didn't quite do what I would have liked them to have done, which was to um, echo the little clumps of, um, of trees. But I, I rather like the shadows and the top light work quite well. Yeah, I think that combination of green, blue and, and white clouds can work very effectively, can't it? Like you say, but sometimes you can't always control where those clouds uh, might be. Um, yeah. there, there is, uh, Sarah was just asking about permissions for the use of photos. Uh, and we've, I, we've, I feel we've sort of touched on that there, Sarah, with regards personal and commercial use. Obviously, when you're outside, it depends on the country. If you are shooting uh, people and, and you're not then going on to sell that commonly that that's perfectly okay a bit like you would on your holiday snaps you know people in the background etc so it does depend on the situation and where you might be and I think I would just broadly say without going to specifics on that that that's something if you're on a tour with us in various parts of the world we would the, the tutors would advise on what is and what isn't sort of uh, acceptable and and preferential in the area based on local situations um if we can it will just pick up back on the tree theme because i wanted to just touch on that and uh this particular um you know i'm seeing all sorts of scary things actually maybe that's something dark about my mindset here but we we both share a fascination of trees obviously and this this isn't something i would expect to see in india that may be my own ignorance but i, I don't know about you charlie no, I was surprised. I think it was a banyan tree, which are, are known for their rather peculiar sort of sinister rooting system. Um, but you're quite right about 
I mean, I, all landscape photographers absolutely love trees, don't we? And, and oh my word, I, I've seen some wonderful renditions, for want of a better word, from so many photographers in the UK of, of wonderful images of trees, and we gravitate to them. And what, I think what's special in recent well, in recent months almost, we're learning um, something that perhaps many of us already knew, our tree huggers amongst us, that actually the trees are not simply just inert things, that they communicate with one another, they protect one another. And that's just wonderful that we've been illuminated in this way, right? like the great Richard Maybe naturalist talks about trees and there are many other super tree specialists who, who almost worship trees. And my pet hate is the chainsaw, but there it is, you know, I'm sitting at a, in front of a wooden desk, so we, we shouldn't, uh, we sh I should move on from there. But yes, the trees in India are rather exceptional, I must say. And um, this one was a, a real surprise to me, it really was. So um, I, I think it was more of a record photograph of it. Of it. Um, it might have been better to have had a darker sky behind and, and made more of an issue of the tree. But um, I'm still nevertheless very fond of it. Just very briefly going back to the discussion we had earlier about um, permission for photograph, uh, to, mm. to make photographs or to, uh, make, you know, uh, capitalize from having made the photograph. I do think it's important to thank your subject. Um, and I know that's probably what most of us in, would, would na do quite naturally. But it really, really is important because we are taking something. And a bit like we know that in, in parts of... Um, in parts of Africa years and years ago that people thought you were stealing their st soul with your camera and um, but not in India so that that gratitude and the exchange we have uh, demonstrates to them that we are we are friend not foe and that we we honor them and we our gratitude is immense because we've come away with a beautiful photograph of of them so so there it is and I'm sure all our our, our viewers and our, our friends watching this will will do the same I just feel confident in that yeah, good. Well, we wanted to touch on the water aspect because I know the during the tour you spend some time, I believe, on the water and, and obviously by the water. And, and water is very important in that part of the world for, for the for the way they live, um, for resources, for travel. I would imagine for all sorts of things. So there's three or four images here, Charlie, and I might just gradually sort of gently walk through them as you fill us in a little bit of the background about your experiences with with water because photographically we love water you and i especially and i know you recommend people to seek out water if they're ever struggling photographically or if they've hit a bit of a brick wall it does afford us so much opportunity it really does i, I often say if you can find water you might be blessed with twice the light and um, through reflection obviously and that's one's often quite grateful for that um, and it enlivens what might be rather dull but the, the, these little little ones were on their way to school and uh, she was their teacher. And I know they all had their hands together, seemingly in prayer. Uh, it was a lovely, lovely moment. The, the light on all of them was really super. And, uh, and I was in a boat. Um, and we would do a lot of boating. You're quite right, Sam. Thank you for highlighting the relevance of water in Kerala. Uh, people call it the Venice of India. There's another example. Um, and the, the settings are just so wonderfully presented to you, you know, a fan-like shape of palm trees. And, and the man with his elbow, and a question of timing, really. Reflections are very good. Um, and, I, and so really, and a lot of opportunity for black and white. Oddly enough, perversely, after all this color, there's a mm. lot of black and white um, opportunities. Um, but yes, so there's, I think, a few more, to, more water ones, aren't there? There we are. I'm amazed he made any progress at all, but the same group of trees. And I think he just got up and grabbed a sheet and put it on his uh, on his little makeshift mast and boom. But it was really quite funny. And he was in the white as well. So that, that was rather appropriate, I think. But um, a, a nice little blue sky. And this was a marvelous moment when their umbrellas went up. When I arrived, they, it wasn't raining. And then all of a sudden it did, and up went their umbrellas. And a very fleeting rain. It lasts probably about 15, 20 minutes, and then it's replaced like um, countries such as Kerala. Mm. Yeah, it's exactly like that. So it was. I was very grateful that they were just in the right position, you know, as we often are thankful. And uh, and it was quite humorous. <laughs> Once the Englishman arrives, the rain usually follows, um, is, is yeah. obviously the well-known thing. Um, but I, what I think is interesting about these last two or three images is obviously they were at the sim same sort of location. And it, it's true that we sometimes find 
something and i know if i just even if i just flick back through them you know if i s spotted those trees as well i would i would know i have a, a foundation for something and i suppose yes. like like perhaps street photographers or or documentary photographers like we talked about at the very top um sometimes it's a case of letting it unfold into the scene isn't it and and you you know but that's a different approach to how you would do normally or is it maybe you're waiting for light to unfold on a scene or a cloud to come over as it may be a uh, very good discussion Lot, lots of topics there in, one, in a few sentences Sorry. <laughs> right now, yeah, it, no it's because it's an in, in, inviting discussion um i think um somebody told me once that david lean the great film director dr shivago and, and others um and uh, lawrence uh, I'm pretty, I think it was Lawrence of Arabia, I hope it was. Um, I'm pretty sure that he created the scene and then waited for an event to take place within it. So he knew that the image uh, without an event was still strong. And I think Cartier-Bresson had a similar thing. He waited for a little bit of theatre to take place um, within the setting. And, and in Kerala, that's very, very uh, true. And that's very possible. And yeah. so if you find a little scene that you find appealing in terms of shape and design and aesthetics, then wait for a little a little punctuation to take place within the scene and you're done. It's a really yeah. enjoyable process. There's the, the famous Cartier-Bresson with the girl on the stairs, isn't there, as well? Um, and that's an excellent example of that. Um, Charlie, I'm just going to throw a question at you before we get into these fantastic fishing nets. Um, Ali has asked, and it's a, it's a difficult one because I'm not sure how practical that would be, but have you ever thought about traveling back to places like this and trying to find a way of displaying your photos for the people who, li who live there to see? And maybe if I can just expand on that without wishing to steal your thunder there, Ali, but I, I, I do always wonder how whether we interact with the landscapes and the areas we go into is a, a a counterpoint to how the people there live it i would imagine it is just as it would be for anyone visiting where we live mm. i i think that would be a lovely thing to do ali i really really do it would be a, a, a wonderful generous um gesture um and perhaps one could arrange such a thing i mean what what would be rather fun would be to send the images get an address because the postal system is extraordinarily good interestingly enough in kerala um and or perhaps almost as good as ours and we know the railway network is absolutely phenomenal. It impl employs five million people in the entire country, which is quite phenomenal. But going back to this gesture, I think it's a lovely, generous thing to do. I really do. And um, I'll look into how that could be, in terms of practicalities, made to um, to come true. Lovely, super idea. We, will, we would better call it the, uh, the Alley Exhibition of uh, Kerala. We assume we might be coming too. Who knows? I think you mentioned as well, didn't you, earlier, that we're di using digital... Um digital uh, technology as we do now, it makes it a lot easier to share those images with people at the time. And I know we've mentioned Paul a couple of times tonight, but obviously we do stuff together. And I know he does carry a little print, uh, Instax print thing with him, so he can print them out. But obviously back in the day when you're shooting film, uh, that's not always wholly practicable. But uh, I'm no. conscious of the time and what we have to get through, Charlie. So apologies everyone if I pick a little bit of pace up here, but um, these fishing nets, uh, I know you wanted to just explain because there's another color image coming after this, and that for me it shows a great contrast in how you might approach a similar subject. But just maybe fill us in a little bit of background of um, why you think it's appealing. I will. Well, they're, they're, it's the repetition and the rather bizarre shape and sort of skeletal feel. But they were Chinese fishing nets in, uh, in what is now known as Kochi, as opposed to what what it was Cochin, and they always, excuse me, they always work together. And um, what happens is it's really actually quite simple. They're on platforms and they drop a, a sort of leverage lever system. The whole net just drops down and it remains there for quite a part of the day. And then I think at short notice, up it, up they come and their and their captive little fish are floundering around in the nets. And um, there, it is a big, there's a big industry of fishing in Cochin. And as I say, Venice of India, it's not just the coast. There are an immense number of waterways running through little canals, rivers, lakes. It's, it's just fantastic, the, the, the amount of water everywhere. And fishing one will see um, pretty much everywhere. Very rarely a single person fishing. Usually the nets, apparently most effective. And uh, we have this other beautiful image uh, from here, and we a blue and white theme continues. Uh, so maybe just explain this one, Charlie. There's the obvious uh, 
visual arrest station on the, on the right hand yeah. side here of our lady so tell us more yes well it, the signature of the if you like the little gesture icon that that worked i think quite well she happened to be there um but interestingly enough the nets you can barely see them and i was rather disappointed that they are there they were very very fine mesh but and uh the the men in the boat just happened to be passing by but this was one of the big lakes that that is it's not far from the sea but it's quite far in the south and um and i think when you come across these uh, fishing nets they do lend themselves to some terrific photography um and i think probably this might have worked perhaps in, in black and white from a different angle but generally speaking the relationship of you know your eye scans and then you make a decision as to what you find satisfying and 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 it's a i think that that um arrival if you like uh, of a of a res the response a favorable response to a photograph is is really fascinating to me it's uh, you know the unraveling process as to why why am i finding this a pleasurable experience to look at a particular photograph and i think as we go through our learning process of le about learning about photography it's a very good um, exercise to in, to engage in why am i liking this and why don't i like this and then just to note down what it is that one, where the conflicts are and so on it's a i think it's an excellent way of learning and i'm i'm still doing it myself yeah very good advice um I, I, we're in another fishing situation here as well i presume yes. um and yeah. so even getting down to the ocean is possible Yes, there's a lot of it. We do a lot of ocean photography because the whole of the Kerala coast is ocean. Um, the water's warm. It's very, very rarely rough. Um, and I think people who love photographing the sea will be well satisfied. And I know there are a number of people who love photographing waves and um, and the patterns on the water. Um, I'm not suggesting this is a, a great masterpiece for one moment, but I but it's a it's a it's a, a rather good record perhaps of um, of an event that takes place takes place on a very regular basis, and it's usually one fisherman. You very you don't see a fishing rod ever. You'll always see a net. It'll always be a net, and they'll spend most of the day fishing. And uh, and it, it's very enjoyable process. It's a lovely coast. It's a it's a ravishingly beautiful coast. And here we are again, another net with a with a little splash of pink reflected in the in the water too. And that that's where the motor drive, um, which I know people love for, in sport photography, that that um, that moment which you suddenly think, oh, I do twelve frames a second. And I did have a, a camera with me that did that. And I'm, I was rather pleased, actually, with the result. That it, that it just splashed at that perfect moment. But a, but a, a far cry from what I normally do. But that, nonetheless, gave me immense pleasure. And I sort of patted myself on the back that I, I caught the opt, optimum moment. I think, as I said to you, it strikes me as a sort of dragon leaping out of the water. But maybe maybe I have a slightly uh, fantastical mind for these things. But I think what, what is important, maybe, is what we talked about at the beginning, that <clears throat> um, just being aware is always so important. What's happening around you, what's happening behind you in, in bustly places and in new places, it can be very easy just to get totally distracted. And, and reacting this way to things photographically is quite a different skill to gently setting up with the tripod and considering all of those things. So uh, I would find that's something you would encourage people to do. Um, and maybe some people find that easier than others. I really, I really would. And in fact, my little another pet phrase is being visually agile. And that, mm -hmm. that um, I know it sounds a bit fanciful, but it, it's so refreshing to be, to be sort of thrown into such a, a vital country like Kerala, where you, you, you truly is 360 degrees there and there and there and across there. It's just so busy. And, and you think, well, everything is a photograph. And of course, then you become a bit more discerning on day two and day three. And then you start realizing that there are certain things that you gravitate toward and, uh, and you start uh, producing your own particular style and your own particular response to the country. And, and I did rather love the individual relation, the relationships of the individual person doing their thing, surrounded with acres of coconuts. I mean, imagine she's chopped every single one of those, covered probably in coconut juice, um, and it's a it's a it's a huge crop in in India, and there, I think there are one or two of this nature of this image. Yes, yeah. um, I mean, just be, actually, just briefly before we go on, if if it is about finding that moment, isn't it? That that splash of the of the 
water as it's opened and that's the difference between just the standard shot of it you know of, every, when you're doing these sorts of things the, the exact moment and the exact positioning is is very very important but i just wanted to touch on this one for a minute or two charlie because i just find it uh lovely just to wander around my eyes wandering around and all the texture i'm seeing the balance of colors um so tell me more well they they may i didn't really know this and uh, i may be mis i may be misinforming everybody but there are there are various different uh, um other products that come from the coconut which of course is the the sort of hairy bit on the around the the coconut itself and there are quite a lot of other products that are that are produced and in north the agriculture in in Kerala is is really fantastic it's not just coconuts an enormous amount of vegetables and tea of course and her role eventually is to collect wads of this and then go and bind it together and make rope it's very hard to believe but they do it and they and it must be not too dissimilar to cotton but it's a, a wonderful thing to watch and her outfit is just you know it looks a bit ragged but actually she was rather elegant when she sat up and stood up and, and smiled at me i remember her just saying i hope you've enjoyed and you've got images that you wanted you know she she made to to that effect and, and once again no sense of invasion or intrusion that's one of the things that's so lovely about I've said it many times now about photographing in Kerala is that you don't feel you're intruding. And he knew I was photographing him up there. And, you know, he, he was, uh, talk about gymnastics. He just literally shimmied up the, the, um, the, the tree just in a few seconds. It was just extraordinary. I think from the point of view of telling the story of a scene, when we go to, <clears throat> excuse me, when we go to some places, um, where, wherever it may be, in the UK or further afield, you know, sometimes you're, you're, role photographically is, is to try and just think of a mini story around what's happening there and so every element of that a bit like you know a documentary photographer or even a wedding photographer to be honest it, it, you have to tell the whole story and so it's being uh, as charlie says visually agile enough to know uh, what's going on and little moments uh <laughs> Uh, the, the slightly qu worried look in this lady's eyes above her head. <laughs> uh, yes, the, what had happened, I think the melons were in her basket. And um, I think she, you can see that they weren't exactly centred. So the basket really should have been more in the middle of her head. And I, she was very, very close to, um, to the whole lot falling down. And so that was a moment where she just looked up. And uh, she did look at me afterwards and gave me the most broadest grin, as if to say that was a close one, wasn't it? She was just a wonderful little a little event that took place between her and me that lasted probably no more than maybe 30 seconds. And and it was a really memorable one. And and you're quite right, a, a collection of images going together to make a if you like a sort of um, a theme to convey a general mood and a feel as to what this, the, you know, a mosaic, if you like, of different images as to what this wonderful country is like. I couldn't resist the three doors and the washing in front of it. I mean, who could? It was, it just seemed to, it's one of those images that seemed to work for me, a rather peculiar one, nevertheless, but I enjoyed doing it. Well, we want, yeah, and I think it's important to uh, bring up the point again about about symmetry, about repetition, about pattern, about design. Um, <clears throat> and I think if we look at any of the great um, photographers and photography of years gone by across all the different types of genres, I suppose, there's often a, a curiousness about it, sometimes a slight humor even, like we find in these laid out, like pairs of you know long shorts or trousers. Um, yeah. So there's a there's always a thing, isn't there, in some of this type of work where we just think, what what is that? We have to arrest the viewer, uh, and if we find it curious ourselves as as viewers while we're there, then it's likely it will make an interesting photograph. Oh, you put it so well. I couldn't agree more, Sam. Uh, and I think you're right. It's about noticing. And um, I met somebody more a long time ago who said, um, "Why do you have to photograph everything?" And I said, "Well, I'm going to see more, rather rather audacious of me to say, I'm going to see more with my camera than you might." because that's the thing, our camera gets us, engages more profoundly, engages us more profoundly to what we're looking at. And it's a conduit, isn't it, really, between us and what we're, what we're photographing. And we really do get, cuddle up next to it. We just get closer. We get closer to the things we're photographing. And I, I think the, the camera um, uh, uh, plays an immense part in us engaging very profoundly with our surroundings. I've, I think all of my chums, and I'm sure you would feel the same, she never dropped a brick, Sam. Never. 
and she was responsible for every single brick in that image every single one what a girl amazing amazing isn't it and, we, and that's a lot of the things we've talked about tonight with regards color um uh, uh telling the story of the place and also photographically with regards order and, and symmetry and i mean you know i i yes i'd be delighted here although charlie there's one just in the middle here don't know if i can zoom in on that oh no i can't um one's just out of place i'm very upset by that visually oh, so, I'm so sorry but I mean, well, I'm, it. I'm, I'm terrible like that you know oh dear how could i have missed that sam <laughs> i'll um, let you off um we've just got two or three here which yeah. we wanted to put well so tell us about these scenes um, and where, where you encounter them maybe charlie uh, well they're quite big they're just they're just simply um i suppose godlike images and we know you know with the trunk uh it would be completely wrong of me to try and um illustrate uh, the reason behind that why they're there and what their role is um because i don't know enough about it but what i do know is that they it was a record photograph of somebody else's artwork and that's all i did i just thought it was impossible to resist um they were absolutely beautiful they were very big and the the pastel colors were were irresistible and I, and so uh, that's all i've done is i've just photographed someone else's um immense artwork and i enjoyed it hugely and that i really and the fading of them was was extraordinary so they'll they'll still be there for us i'm sure well, we've talked about texture and color a lot, haven't we? And I think for me, some of these colors are, are, are what I associate with, you know, maybe that part of the world as well. Um, even dusky, dusky late afternoon evenings in the sun, etc. And we just have everybody, we have a couple of images left and hugely, uh, firstly, sorry, a huge thanks for joining us again, as ever, on these Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. We're always gonna be here for the following weeks in, on Facebook and on YouTube and uh, as ever, it only works if you guys come along and you take part and your comments are very important to us uh, and Charlie and myself. We've got a couple more images though, so don't go anywhere just yet, stay with us. Um, and Charlie, we've, we've talked obviously about lots of different things to do with the culture, to do with the interaction with food and everything else, but um, there's a certain sort of grace about this, this poetic mm. movement to the foot here. So. And I, I, I rather like the fact that her, her, the top of her dress just above the hem was a similar texture as the, as the corn, uh, which was very, very strange. But I think what, what this really reminds me of is that a huge number of the, of the people living in Kerala participate in, in, la, in the land and growing things. And, and they depend on, on the growing of things. And of course, everything grows really enormously successfully. And, and I think that's a very interesting observation that, that engaging with the land, and which we, I like to think, do as landscape, as photographers, um, I think um, you develop a relationship with the land and they especially do because they depend on it. So they have to respect it and honor it, which they do. And so everyone you meet is pretty much, to a greater or lesser extent, involved in food production. Um, and I think that's a, a wonderful thought. And the, the number of women are completely, they absolutely, the country probably depends on their determination to, to do well and to produce the food at the, in, the, in the way that it is produced. So you don't see, see anybody starving. There is no one who goes without food in Kerala. And just as we come to our final image there's, there's lots i love about this to, for, for many reasons um but charlie maybe i'll just let you finish up on th this gentleman um, well it was the relationship of colors i think color plays an immense part doesn't it um and the pastel colors working with each other um i think the the color of his beard and his hair and his sort of sort of slightly ragamuffin look and his bony legs and then the vertical shapes in the wind the blues behind and the and then the horizontal shapes fit i think incredibly well I, he he perhaps could have been in a different position um he knew i was there but it, it he wasn't really bothered at all and i did make a little gesture as if to say you know is it all right and he just he was not in any way concerned um i think he was pretty elderly 
In fact, you can see that he was. But at the same time, when he still had that wonderful grace and that approach, and I was another human being, and he respected me, and when I left, I just bowed my head and said thank you, and he smiled, and and as I say, very, very gracious. But I, I do think the colors play, and his legs, of course, played a very important part, I must say. And the blue was a lovely pastel blue. Yeah. Excellent. Um, okay, just a couple of little bits of housekeeping before we wrap everything up. Uh, Frank has just asked, can previous videos be watched on YouTube? It's my first time here. Yes, Frank, they can. If you just check out the Light and Land YouTube channel, and there is a playlist in there called Live Streams, and all the previous live streams are there. There is about 26 or 27 of them at this point. So we've been going a little while, and we will be going uh, for a little bit longer too. Uh, thank you for all the lovely comments coming in. Just before I wrap up, I'm going to just promote next week. Uh, Adrian Beasley, Verity Milligan is joining us and myself. Uh, we are going to be uh, doing a Creative Choices. So this is a live editing session. Uh, now, what we do with that is we invite you to send in your photos, uh, your raw files, new images taken in the... Uh, regulations they're allowed to be taken or any old images from your archive favorites or things you've struggled with or things you just like to see reinterpreted in an edit in a creative way and all three of us are going to be there next week which is amazing um and we're going to go through that so to take part you need to upload your photos there's a dropbox folder you don't need a dropbox account you just need the link and i'm going to make sure light and land posts that link in the next couple of days on the facebook page and again it will be on the Light Man newsletter. I've had a couple of people asking on, on the questions here about how do we know about that. Um, you uh, do just need to check out the Light Man newsletter, which you can sign up to through their site. I'm going to grab a couple of the individual questions after we come off air and deal with them directly on that. OK, uh, but thanks once again for all the questions, comments and positive vibes throughout this. Charlie, as I wrap us up, only a minute over. I'm doing pretty well for the Rusty after a few weeks off. Um, thank you very much, Charlie. It's always a pleasure. You and I could while away many hours doing this, but I really appreciate your time and everyone out there seems to as well. So thank you. Thank you, Sam. As always, absolute perfection. Thank you. You're very welcome. And thank you, guys. You're all fab. We love doing this for you. We love talking photography. It's what we all love. And so engaging with it in this way, hopefully we've given you an hour to just escape to somewhere else in the world and indulge your passion because it's our passion too. And it's what we do obviously at Light and Land. Do check out the tour, okay? It's 13th to 24th of September. We're very much hoping that is gonna go. Uh, we're fingers crossed on that. Obviously, some positive things happening on that, uh, on that front, obviously, from a COVID point of view. Very, very final thing, I promise, if you've enjoyed what we do, please, please, please hit that like button on Facebook or YouTube or share and or share the post, all right? We really, really, do appreciate that. And if you've missed any of this or any of the others, check out the YouTube channel for the live streams. But that's it from Charlie and I. I shall see you next week and uh, cheerio for now. Goodbye, everybody.